Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on quadratic functions, and our objective is to graph quadratic functions. Now, in the previous lesson, you learned about nonlinear functions. A special type of a nonlinear function is a quadratic function. Now, a quadratic function is a function in which the greatest power of the variable is 2. Its graph is U-shaped, opening upward or downward. Now, we're going to take the information from that paragraph to complete the graphic organizer by answering the information about quadratic functions with true or false. And if the answer is false, we'll give the true statement. First, a function in which the greatest power of the variable is 2. Well, if we look in our statement, a quadratic function is a function in which the greatest power of the variable is 2. So that statement is true. If we just work our way clockwise, the graph of a quadratic function sometimes opens upward. Well, its graph is U-shaped, opening upward or downward, so does it sometimes open upward? Our answer for there is yes, so true. Next, continuing clockwise, the graph always opens downward. Well, we just said it sometimes opens upward, and our statement says it's opening upward or downward, so this is false. And our true statement would be the graph can open upward or downward. And our last statement as we continue clockwise here, the graph is a straight line. Well, its graph is U-shaped as in our statement, so this is false. The graph is U-shaped. And now that we know a little bit about quadratic functions, let's continue on. Our real world link asks us, during soccer practice, Chris kicked a soccer ball straight into the air. The height h in feet of the ball after t seconds can be determined by using the equation h equals negative 16 t squared plus 40 t plus 2. What is the height of the ball after one and a half seconds or one and five tenths seconds? Well, we're solving for height here, so let's rewrite our equation h equals negative 16 t squared plus 40t plus 2. Just be careful with your t's and pluses. Sometimes they can look similar. And we're, our height is h, and that's what we're solving for. And our time is t seconds, and we're given one and a half seconds. So every time in our equation we're given the variable t, we need to substitute in the 1 and 5 tenths. So let's do that now h is going to equal negative 16 times the 1.5 squared plus 40 times 1 and a half plus 2. Now, with this negative 16 t squared, in our order of operations, exponents comes before multiplication, which is one of the reasons why I wrote this the way I did. So as we work this formula out, h equals negative 16 times 1.5 squared is 1.5 times 1.5, which is 2.25 or 2 and 25 hundredths, plus... 40 times 1.5 plus 2, 
Those who have worked with me before know that I like taking things just one step at a time. And so our next step is negative 16 times the 2 and 25 hundredths. So we have h equals negative 36 plus the 40 times 1 and 5 tenths plus 2. Next in our order of operations is that multiplication. So we have h equals negative 36 plus 60 plus 2. And negative 36 plus 60 is 24. And 24 plus 2 is 26. So our answer here is 26 feet. A quadratic function can be written in the form y equals a x squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. The graph opens upward if the coefficient of the variable that is squared is positive, downward if it's negative. So in y equals 6x squared, when we're talking about that coefficient, it's this 6. And since it is a positive, we can expect this graph to open upward. Now when it comes to graphing these, we want to create a table. And we're going to create a table that's x and then our rule, which is 6x squared and our y. Now, you can also have another row or column that's x, y as well. So as we draw our table here, When we pick numbers, it is very important that you pick numbers for x that are both positive and negative. And it's always helpful to have our zero. So as we pick our x's, I would pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So now, we just need to solve a bunch of problems. We would have 6 times negative 2 squared. And negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So our ordered pair here would be negative 2 24. What about when x is negative 1? Well, we would have 6 times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. And 1 times 6 is 6. So our, our ordered pair here is negative 1, 6. What about 0? Well, 6 times 0 squared, well, 0 times 0 is 0, times 6 is 0. So this is just 0, 0. What about 1? Well, 6 times 1 squared, 1 times 1 again is 1, times 6 is 6. So we have 1, 6. And with our 2, 6 times 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, times 6 is 24, so we have 2, 24, and you should see some symmetry here. Now, with our 0, 0, that's going to be right here in the origin. Our 1, 6 is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up here. And our negative 1, 6 is negative 1 and 6. And we actually, that's about all we can graph because we can't get our negative uh, 2, 24 and our 2, 24 on this graph, and that's okay. You know, we put it on the table, and just because we can't graph it, that's still okay. 
Now as I draw this, it's a U shape. And so we want to make sure we draw a U shape here and not something with straight lines. And this is the graph, if we label it, of Y equals 6X squared. Now if we stop and reflect before we continue on, is it possible for a function to be both increasing and decreasing and explain below? Well, typically when we have linear equations, when we move from left to right, if the graph of our line looks something like this, we would call this an increasing function. Since as our x's increase, our y's increase. And if we look at another linear function, we would say that this is a decreasing function, since as our x's increase, our y's decrease. And so is it possible for a function to be both increasing and decreasing? Well, when we deal with our quadratic functions, I would say yes. Because as we look at our u, one part of it is going to be decreasing, and the other part is increasing. So I could say yes. The graph of a quadratic function both increases and decreases. The outdoor observation deck of the Space Needle in Seattle, Washington is 520 feet above ground level. Use the graph to estimate how far you could see from the observation deck. Well, let's look at our graph. What do we have? We have our distance in miles on the x-axis and our height in feet on the y. And we're saying the Space Needle is 520 feet above ground level. So let's add a height. Here is 500 across this line. And so 520 would be somewhere eh, kind of even further down in there, that area. And so if we were to estimate using the graph, it's going to be somewhere right along here on the graph. And if we look down, I would say that's right there is about 28 miles. And that's all we're looking for. Now, of course, would I accept answers of 27, 29? Sure. Sure. So here is the point where y is equal to 520. And then we looked down to say, well, okay, well, what is that on the x-axis? And we're thinking that, okay, that is about 28. Now that's our last book example, but I do want to go over one more example here. One of a quadratic function that will be downwards. What if we want to graph y equals negative 2x squared? And let's add 1 to that. Now let's create our xy table again x, and then our rule, negative 2x squared plus 1, our y, and our xy. And for x, let's use again negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now, as we put this in, we'll have negative 2 times negative 2 squared plus 1.
Now you can show as much or as little work from this point if you'd like to say, okay, negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. And so you would have negative 2 times 4 plus 1. That could help you, because then negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 1 is negative 7. So your ordered pair is negative 2, negative 7. What about when x is equal to negative 1? Well, we would have negative 2 times negative 1 squared, and negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. So you would have negative 2 times 1 plus 1, and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And so our ordered pair here is negative 1, negative 1. Forgot the plus 1 there. What about 0? Negative 2 times 0 squared plus 1. Well, 0 times 0 is 0. So you'd have negative 2 times 0 plus 1. And well, negative 2 times 0 is also 0. And plus 1 is 1. So you have the point 0, 1. As we continue, we would have negative 2 times 1 squared plus 1. And once again, 1 squared is 1. So you would have negative 2 times 1 plus 1. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Plus 1 is once again negative 1. So we have 1, negative 1. And with our 2, we would have negative 2 times 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4 times negative 2. And negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Plus 1 is again negative 7. And the more of these you do, the more you'll see, okay, my negative 2 is negative 7. My 2 is also negative 7. The more you'll see patterns like that. Now when we go to graph this, And probably not going to be perfect here since I'm freehanding it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, negative seven. One, two, one, two, or negative one, negative two. Let's go ahead and graph. Negative two, negative seven is down here. Negative 1, negative 1 is up here. 0, 1 is right there. 1, negative 1 is here. And 2, negative 7 is down here. And again, this is just a freehand graph, but you can see where it's a bit of a U, but the upside down U. It's downwards. And this is the graph of Y equals negative 2X squared plus 1. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.